Hey gorgeous, this is episode number 252 with our amazing Matt Inglet. Hey, this is Matt Inglot. You are listening to Heart Sales Podcast with Christine Schlonsky. Enjoy. Well, I am so excited about our guest today. We are going to talk about how to build a business intentionally. And Matt really knows what he talks about because he went from an 80-hour work week, buried in debt, trying to run a brick and mortar business to actually redefining his ID client are going for remote work and suddenly only working 20 hours a week, making a six figure income while being happy and fulfilled. So we really need to listen to this episode. If you want to know what to do, if you're not just going for growth, but you really go for business building with intention. Matt Inglet is the founder of Tilted Pixel, that is an agency dedicated to helping six and seven figure membership site owners to grow their business. Matt's 15 years of experience in working with digital products and membership sites has allowed him to see what works and what doesn't across a wide range of membership businesses and to be able to quickly spot the issues that are preventing your site from growing. So I can't wait to dive into this conversation because this will make a huge difference on how you see your business and how you are adjusting in case you are not 100% fulfilled right now and you do feel like you're struggling and hustling, but you do not really love 100% what you do, then this episode is just right for you. Enjoy. Well, I am so excited to have you on the show today, Matt. I'm really excited to be here today. I know, and I love your, so to speak, sales story. I think it's so inspiring. So you tried to make like the brick and mortar business work and kind of wore yourself out to figure out that an 80 hour week is not what you wanted. And now you have this amazing business. You work less and you make more money. (laughs) So this is really, really cool. And I know that lots of our listeners are trying to figure out how to make life easier. So let's just start off. Like, how did you do it? Yeah, I I did it the hard way. So this has been like, I guess the story of my life is that nothing works unless I do it in a way that's actually congruent with how I want to live my life. And I've had to learn that lesson multiple times and it's just been the recurring theme. And that fits so nicely with this idea of the Heart Sells podcast, because you know I think it's about more than starting a business. So uh, as you pointed out, I, I did have a brick and mortar office. I, I started my companies right from uh, university. I was still going to school. I was trying to run my business. I knew I didn't want to work at a corporation. I had tried that. It was miserable. Um, so I knew I kind of had to do things my own way. But in the process of trying to be a big shot entrepreneur and create this amazing company that would grow quickly and do all these cool things, I realized I had accidentally created the exact type environment that I didn't work in. I I didn't want to work in. I had an office. I had employees. I had to come in every single day. And because I was the owner and because I was trying to manage this big thing that I didn't even really know how to manage... I was working like insane hours. Like I always say, I was working 80 hours a week. Uh, But the reality was actually, I was working a lot more than that. Um, But I never tracked exactly how long. And at some point, you just stop believing me. So, uh, you know, basically, I was waking up at five in the morning. uh, You know, no matter what the weather, no matter how I felt, I worked all day. Um, At some point, I fit in some sort of studies as well. And then I'd be, you know, leaving the office way after the janitorial staff had already left, uh, basically passing out in bed at like 11 or midnight and just doing the whole thing over and over and over again. And it completely wore me down. And then eventually the whole thing just kind of imploded in my face um, because I realized I could not go on. Uh, at, at the beginning of 2011, I, was re- I realized I, I can't do another day of this. Uh, this is not working. So I just started reevaluating everything, right, like right back to first principles, like what's working about the business? What's not? Is anything working? Um, do I shut the thing down? And as I started digging into it, I realized, well, actually, 
I do have a cool business in here somewhere, but there's a couple of problems. I mean, one, I don't want to go to an office anymore. It's terrible. It's expensive. Um, it wears down my psyche. It's not right for me. Uh, two is we were taking on too many clients, which doesn't sound like a problem until you realize that most of those clients weren't actually generating real profit for us. Uh, we were building websites and there was a small percentage of clients where we did a lot of work for. They were five figure clients. They were excellent clients. And that's really where the money came from. And then we would do a lot of these $5,000 websites and they would put a lot of time time drain on me and my team and we weren't really getting much out of it. So I knew I had to pair back the clients, which is something I'm happy to go deeper into because it, it really is central to how I built my life. Um, and I realized that I just kind of had to rebuild it almost from scratch. So I shut down the office. I found someone else to sublease the space and I started a new journey where, I mean, you know, fast forward now it's 2020 uh, and I love my business. We've gone through a bunch of changes since then as well. Um, and every single time, everything has worked well for me and I've made money and I've been happy. It's because uh, I kind of pushed aside just conventional business wisdom and said, how does my day, how does my business, how does my life need to work so I can actually wake up happy? Mm, I love that. It's such an important question. And, uh, you know, I kind of ask that on a regular basis because sometimes you kind of get carried away with certain tasks or projects and then you do what you have to do to make it work, but it might not be a hundred percent in alignment with what you imagine your life to be. And I think it's so, so important that people actually look at how do I want to live and then build the business around that lifestyle. Yeah, it's something that's missing because you're not going to pick up a business book that talks about this, um, especially none of the like real true like classics that have stood the test of time. And actually what, what did open my mind to this originally, but then it took you know another decade for the lessons to really sink in, uh, was the four hour work week, which I'm sure has come up many times over. Um, you know, the book's not perfect, but ultimately it forces you to really question why and how you're doing things in your business uh, and how that affects your life. Whereas most business books are really geared towards the corporate executive and basically how can you build bigger, faster, stronger, which isn't the answer always if you just want to be happy. Yeah, I love that. Can you say that again, please? Which part? <laughs> the, you know, building and you know bigger stronger it, it it does if it doesn't make you happy it doesn't make any sense yeah so most corporate books are focused on the corporate executive and how you can build something that's bigger stronger faster and not actually what's going to make you happy yeah i and and for me it's so important that you are happy because you only have this one life and when you give your gifts to the world when you build your business you put everything in there right? It's, it's you, well, maybe you build it so you can sell it at some point, but still like all the sweat that goes in there, all the love that goes in there, you want to make sure you're happy each and every day while doing what you love. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the good news is like, that is actually possible. You can architect that if you build your business intentionally. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about building a business intentionally because that's also where the sales part comes in. As you mentioned, you had a big switch in the structure of your clients. And I know that many listeners might be still at the point where they think they have to take everybody on board just to make it work. And maybe we can put a little bit more light <laughs> onto these belief systems. Yeah, absolutely. So you definitely don't have to do that. When you're, when you're completely starting out, it's a little bit different. Uh, no matter who your first client is, I'm very happy that you got your first client. So if you're truly starting out, just go out there, make some sales, learn some things because you need to get an idea of what you enjoy and what works for you. But very quickly, you do start getting clients and you do start realizing, hey, this didn't work, that didn't work you know, why did I end up working 14 hours, you know, in a single day and, you know, sat there in my bed, unable to sleep at three in the morning because work was still turning in my mind. Um, all that stuff starts happening. And that's where you can start peeling back and start thinking about 
what, how do you actually want your business and your life to run together? And the two cannot be separated, right? I mean, your, your business is a huge integral part of your life. And there's a lot of way, a lot of areas that you can focus on. But the big one to me, if you're running a service based business, especially is the type of client that you choose. And that's something that I've thought very hard about. And I've helped other students kind of figure out their ideal clients. And there's basically four things that you really want to look at. Uh, in order to figure out if a client's right for you. So at a high level, the first thing, first things first is taking on that type of client has to be profitable, which, you know, going back to my own story, didn't always happen for all the clients. It, it seemed like money was coming in, but when I actually looked at the value of my time, not to mention my team costs and everything, and the time and effort it took me to sell to that client, um, we weren't really making money, um, not in any appreciable way. And a big part of that is the size of a client. So if you try to take on like, a, if you try to build your business around taking on like $500 clients, let's say you come up with a service that you can bang out in a couple hours, you charge 500 bucks. That sounds awesome. Until you realize how much of these $500 clients you need to have in order to even make 50,000 a year right? Like suddenly that's, I think, a uh, hundred clients that you would have to take on. Well, where are those hundred clients going to come from? And that's, that's only 50,000 a year and that's not counting business expenses or anything that doesn't turn into a $50,000 a year income. So you very quickly realize that there's a minimum size of client that you need. And that's kind of the first thing is like how, uh, how expensive or how big is this client going to be? Um, and are they going to be profitable? And then the second thing is, is this client actually going to get huge value from working with you? So this is kind of the type of client and type of service that you're offering. It's such an uphill battle to sell a service that your particular target client doesn't really need. So in our case, we're very good at building websites that convert visitors to customers. And nowadays we've actually niched that down further and we only work with people that have membership sites or some sort of digital products. But that was our magic uh, sauce, our secret sauce, was we could take visitors to your website and we could turn them into leads. We can turn them into customers. Not everyone is going to value that the same way. If you're making a few million dollars in sales from people coming to your website, any chance to increase that is going to be super valuable to you, right? If you can get a 10, imagine getting a 10% lift uh, on those kind of numbers. That, that means a hundred, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year uh, in return on investment versus if you go and you try to sell the same website, same capability to your local restaurant down the street, they're not going to care. Uh, most of a restaurant's business does not come from their website um, and their economics are very different. They're probably not making millions of dollars a year and certainly their margins are very low. So hiring you is going to be a different business case for them and they're not going to be willing to pay the same thing. So you're going to pick clients that are going to get really good value from working with you. Um, and that's kind of the business stuff, but then you got to start thinking about your lifestyle goals and how you want that business to look like. So then you can start breaking that down further. What kind of client am I going to be happy working with? Um, and that could mean a lot of things because different people's criterias uh, are different. So for example, one thing that was really important for me is I didn't want to work with clients that needed a quick turnaround time. So for example, anytime I took on other agencies as clients, I was miserable because they tended to want to give you the work last minute and then expect it tomorrow. Um, so I wanted to make sure I was doing the type of work where you know, timelines were measured in weeks or even months and we could really do good work at a good pace and not constantly be in emergency firefighting mode mm. for someone else. That was a huge thing to remove. Um, I didn't want to do the type of work that I felt was dull or boring, which everyone has a different definition of that, uh, but very important. You don't want to sit down and basically not want to go through your day. And you kind of start breaking out these criteria. It could be something like, you know, it, the nine to five is sacred for you. You want to spend the rest of your time with family and kids and everything. You don't want to take on clients outside of time zones that you're in or else that's going to become a problem. Or maybe you are, you know, uh, you know, a morning, you know, whatever, early bird. Um, and maybe you want clients outside of your own time zone because then you could wake up at 5 a.m., serve those clients, do your stuff, and then be done by like two in the afternoon. 
right? So it's very specific to your lifestyle. And then the fourth thing, which is more kind of strategic, is once you've kind of figured out all this stuff, like who's going to get value from you, who's going to be profitable, who fits your lifestyle goals, is then the fourth kind of extra trick is what kind of clients are actually clients you already have some sort of connections to, whether that's connections in your network, connections by way of geography. So for example, like if you live somewhere where the oil industry is big, maybe oil clients could be worth exploring. If you live somewhere where software is big, software clients are worth exploring. You know, you start thinking about uh, geography. You start thinking about what sort of uh, interests you have, what sort of memberships and communities you're in. So you kind of try to think about where you already have a bit of an unfair advantage. Um, so those things in total, again, like client profitability, uh, being able to create value for clients, lifestyle considerations, uh, and the client kind of being in your sphere of influence. Uh, those are really, in my opinion, the secrets to finding amazing clients. And it sounds like a lot of work, but you start doing that kind of soul searching and you can start building a very different, much more intentionally designed business. Yeah, I love that. So how did your mindset actually then changed after you discovered that you wanted to work with clients that were able and willing to pay more for your services and not pressure you on timelines? Like how did that, yeah, how did that shift, that transformation happen? The most surprising part was that it became easier to say no. Right. When somebody came interested in a website for this or that, uh, because I had such clear criteria over who I was looking for, it became so easy to refer them to someone else or just turn them down. And whenever you do that, it, it, that sounds crazy because you're turning down money and you could have this client and it all sounds wonderful. But the thing is, because we're in a service based business, when we take on a client, we give up a lot of our time to that client and we give up a lot of, if you know, if you have a team, you give up a lot of your resources of that team. Like there's a huge cost to taking on that client and you can only take on so many clients at a time. So by saying no to the wrong clients, you're actually freeing up that time and resources to find the right clients and then to serve those clients. And at the end of the year, that means you're going to make more money right? Like flat out and you're going to be happier while you're doing it. So for me, that was the biggest change. I mean, there were, there were other changes too, but just having that clarity of mind to be able to say no and then be able to take that time and devote it elsewhere uh, was phenomenal. It, it literally changed my business. Yeah. And did it scare you the first times? Were you nervous about saying no? Um. Yeah, I mean, saying no, no is kind of scary, uh, especially, you know, in the situation I was in where I had just like completely demolished my business and built it from the ground up. Um, and anytime your bank account is lower than you want it to be, it gets harder and harder to say no. Um, but you kind of have to just kind of zoom out a little bit and think logically. Yes, OK, it's scary to turn down that client. But what are the actions I can take with the 10, 20, 80 hours of time that I save in order to find the right client? And when you realize, well, I am actually creating that opportunity to find that client, not to, not to watch Netflix, but to actually go out there and find the right client, then it becomes a lot safer. Now, you do get to a point, of course, where if someone is really struggling, like you're seriously worried about where food will come from tomorrow, I'm not going to tell you to turn down a client right? That's an extreme situation. But I don't think most service-based business people are in that situation. They're more worried about the next three months or next six months or how that year will look for them. And when you're in that position, yes, you can turn down that client and it'll almost certainly end better for you as long as you go forward and you execute. Mm, yeah, I love that. And I also found that turning down clients uh, or referring them to someone else is incredibly empowering yes. having <laughs> having having that audacity or that opportunity or that potential or whatever you want to call it to say no is really empowering because we well m most of the people learn to be nice and to say yes and to be friendly and not being really clear of what they truly desire so oftentimes we come up with compromises 
And when, when I started to say no to a client first in corporate, and then now my own business, I, th- I find it each time very, very empowering. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. That's an excellent point. And that actually bleeds over to the clients that you say yes to, which is, I think, what your point is. It becomes easier to do other things like stick to your prices, stick to your process. Um, don't Basically, don't be a pushover. I think most of us really in services, we start off as pushovers. I certainly did. I would do anything and everything to please a client. But then I realized that there is a distinction between trying to make a, hap- a happy client and trying to create results for a client. And those were not always the same two things. Like sometimes clients would suggest things that I knew were bad ideas or just put all their time and attention on things that really didn't matter. Like uh, I I once redid a logo for a client 12 times uh, and it was basically the same logo. It wasn't even like logo design. It was just how their logo was placed on the website. And none of that mattered. I I guarantee you that the final result, which wasted like way too many hours of our time, had no impact on their business. So yeah, being able to say no, being able to have a backbone, being able to go for the exact result that you're envisioning for yourself and for your client is absolutely empowering and allows you to run a better and more focused business where your day is not robbed from you over silly stuff that you can just kind of opt out of. Yeah, totally. And what I love, you brought us a really, really cool gift. And it's actually the ideal client worksheet. Tell us about it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, hopefully I've made the case for why picking the right clients matters. And I've told you all of these criteria. Um, I have this all laid out in a worksheet. It's a Word document, so you can actually type in it. You can make it your own. And it takes you through these criteria with specific instructions and examples. And you can find all of that at freelancetransformation.com slash FBS. That's freelancetransformation.com slash FBS. It's there waiting for you to change your business. Yeah, awesome. And I really want to encourage you to hop on over there and to download that Word document and really work with it, right? Because that's, you know, just downloading doesn't help you. (laughs) So getting that clarity and really seeing how Matt has changed his whole business and is so much happier in his life, is working so much less, is producing such better results. You know, you don't need to go for our work week (laughs) if that's your goal. Perfect. But most of us, we love so much what we do that we love working, but really find that balance. What's good for you and what do you want your life to look like? And then, you know, put your business around those desires and make it work the way you want to make it work. Because after all, you created the whole thing. So why not create it in a way you want it? So I will also put that in the show notes under the resource tab. And um, yeah, I can't wait to have another conversation with you because I still have so many more questions. Thank you so much for this episode. And I'm looking forward to our next. Thanks so much, Christine. I really loved all the thoughts that Matt shared and also his path. I think it's really, really inspiring and a great reminder of asking ourselves better questions. Are we still loving what we do? If so, that's great. But if not, what are the steps that we can take to move into fulfillment, to move into happiness, to not fall into the trap of working too much for too less and not with the right customers? I just loved everything that Matt shared and I'm really looking forward to the next episode with him. For right now, hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab and there you will find this episode, including the transcripts, the show notes, the amazing resources, Matt's gifts and also the book he has mentioned. And once you're over there, also the invitation to join a wonderful heart-centered community of impact-driven entrepreneurs who are thriving to live their life beyond their wildest dreams while helping others to make their wildest dreams come true. And that takes place at the Heart Cells members community. You can find that as well in the resources mentioned, or you can hop on over to heartcellscommunity.com and just join this amazing community. 
Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world. And I'm looking forward to seeing you for the next episode with Matt.